Why haven't we found alien life yet? That question seemingly cannot be answered, at least for now. We've advanced centuries from thinking the Earth is flat and the center of our universe. We've taken shots of a once theoretical object, the black hole. But somehow, through all the discoveries that we've made of the cosmos, we've never found alien life. An alarming new update suggests that our newest, most expensive and powerful observatory, the James Webb Telescope, might never find aliens. But why will our most equipped telescope not be able to find life beyond? A recent research paper has warned that NASA's James Webb Telescope could have a flaw that restricts us from knowing about life other than ours. The models scientists use to interpret the findings after the telescope makes an observation could be inaccurate. The study warns that the model researchers use to understand opacity, or in other words, how easily light passes through an atmosphere, may be off by an order of magnitudes. That sparks trouble for an already very well-funded mission in the JWST. The Webb Telescope is designed to identify objects in space that are too distant to be spotted by the Hubble Telescope, or in other words, too early in regard to time. It is also known for having high infrared resolution and sensitivity that gives it this advanced ability, but all of that may not matter according to a recent paper published in Nature Astronomy. The report argues that the James Webb Telescope, which studies planets outside our solar system or exoplanets, may use inaccurate models which produce faulty readings of the wavelengths of light that pass through a planet's atmosphere. That already sounds pretty alarming, considering how much the observatory costs. If you already didn't know, the James Webb Telescope cost $10 billion, and if that isn't enough to find life elsewhere, then I dare not imagine how much could. As you all can imagine, this could be a prominent hurdle for the study of exoplanets, which in turn could provide key clues for life existing outside our solar system. Prajwal Nirala, a co-author of the paper and an MIT graduate, said that this is a significant problem which needs to be addressed. Nirala said, Currently, the model we use to decrypt spectral information is not up to par with the precision and quality of data we have from the James Webb Telescope. We need to up our game and tackle together the opacity problem. The faulty model analyzes the measurement of how much light passes through or gets absorbed by the materials, and at which wavelengths this occurs. Each chemical element absorbs light differently, meaning that astronomers can reconstruct the chemical compositions and ratios of these chemicals using these measurements. This spectrum can tell scientists which compounds and how great a quantity are present in a planet's atmosphere. This includes gases and organics which may reveal signs of biological activity. But interpreting this the wrong way could prove significant. Julian DeWitt, assistant professor in MIT's Department of Earth, another co-author of the study, said in a press statement, there is a scientifically significant difference between a compound like water being present at 5% versus 25%, which current models cannot differentiate. Let us give you a quick rundown of what opacity really is. So, in its simplest form, opacity is a measure of how easily photons pass through a material. Photons of certain wavelengths can pass straight through a material, be absorbed or be reflected out depending on whether and how they interact with certain molecules within a material. This interaction also depends on a material's temperature and pressure. So, when looking at the actual instruments that are used, the opacity model works on the basis of various assumptions of how light interacts with matter. Astronomers use opacity models to derive certain properties of a material, given the spectrum of light that the material emits. In the context of exoplanets, an opacity model can decode the type of abundance of chemicals in a planet's atmosphere, based on the light from the planet that a telescope captures. 
The study's co-leader, Julian DeWitt, assistant professor in MIT's Department of Earth, Atmospheric, and Planetary Sciences, or EAPS, reveals that the current state-of-the-art opacity model, which he likes as a classical language translation tool, has done a decent job of decoding spectral data taken by instruments such as those on the Hubble Space Telescope. He further explains, So far, this Rosetta Stone has been doing okay, but now that we're going to the next level with Webb's precision, our translation process will prevent us from catching important subtleties such as those making the difference between a planet being habitable or not. The researchers, in their study, put the most commonly used opacity model to the test. The team looked to see what atmospheric properties the model would derive if it were tweaked to assume certain limitations in our understanding of how light and matter interact. The researchers created eight perturbed models. The team then fed each model, including the real version, synthetic spectra, which are patterns of light that were simulated by the group and similar to the precision that the James Webb Telescope currently has. They found that, based on the same light spectra, each perturbed model produced wide-ranging predictions for the properties of a planet's atmosphere. Based on their analysis, the team concludes that, if existing opacity models are applied to light spectra taken by the Webb telescope, they will hit an accuracy wall. That is, they won't be sensitive enough to tell whether a planet has an atmospheric temperature of 300 Kelvin or 600 Kelvin, or whether a certain gas takes up 5% or 25% of an atmospheric layer. Nurala goes on to mention, That difference matters in order for us to constrain planetary formation mechanisms and reliably identify biosignatures. The team also found that every model also produced a good fit with the data, meaning even though a perturbed model produced a chemical composition that the researchers knew to be incorrect, it also generated a light spectrum from that chemical composition that was close enough to, or fit with, the original spectrum. DeWitt further explains, We found that there are enough parameters to tweak, even with a wrong model, to still get a good fit, meaning you wouldn't know that your model is wrong and what it's telling you is wrong. The team raised some ideas for how to improve existing opacity models, including the need for more laboratory measurements and theoretical calculations to refine the model's assumptions of how light and various molecules interact as well as collaborations across disciplines and, in particular, between astronomy and spectroscopy. Although the JWST might not be able to look into the existence of other beings outside, Dr. Narala and her team have recognized what future telescopes could work on. Her team's report will pave the way for better and more precise technologies that could eventually help us find other beings. There could be so much more to be discovered if the modeling was made more accurate, warning that crucial information could be lost due to misinterpretations thanks to the inaccurate flaw within the model. Dr. Narala further added, There is so much that could be done if we knew perfectly how light and matter interact. We know that well enough around the Earth's conditions, but as soon as we move to different types of atmospheres, things change, and that's a lot of data with increasing quality that we risk misinterpreting. Disregarding the flaws in the modeling, although the JWST might not directly be associated with the discovery of other life forms, scientists still believe that the James Webb Telescope can be used to play a pivotal role in the possible discovery of alien life. In fact, a Swiss astrophysicist has predicted that humanity could be on the verge of discovering extraterrestrial life within 25 years thanks to major technological breakthroughs like the James Webb Telescope and other greatly impactful technologies that will come out in the years to come. So, what do you think? When will we finally discover life elsewhere? Even with its problems, do you think the web will help facilitate the discovery? and what, according to you, lies ahead in space discoveries. Let us know in the comments below, and as always, thanks for watching Space Rumor.